Hey, Greg, you wish for a little more action? I do wish for more action, Mike. As you wish, Greg. Let's party! Greg, we're just getting started. Nice. You got two wishes left. Boxing King Media in association with Riyadh Season. Uh, delighted to be joined by Billy Nelson. We're out here in uh, Riyadh. Uh, Billy, your guy Martin Bacoli, uh, a big challenge. Uh, but first of all, uh, how excited are you being in Saudi for the first time uh, with Martin? Well, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really, really excited for a fight on Saturday night. And over the moon that we've been given this opportunity for Martin to fight Takam. Billy, so we got slightly interrupted there. So the first question I wanted to ask you is like how this opportunity came about for Martin? Because uh, obviously, he just come out of the blue because obviously he's signed to boxer, but he's fighting here on a show that is promoted by Top Rank and Queensbury. Well, uh, the things were very, very slow with, with boxer and there was nothing in, in for the foreseeable future. And uh, I got a phone call for uh, Tyson Fury's manager, Spencer Brown, asking if I'd be interested in fighting uh, uh, Takam on uh, Saturday night on the Francis and Ghana undercard and we jumped at the chance because you know, but there was nothing in the pipeline for us so we're very thankful and I'm, I'm pleased that we've got this fight. How does that work? With the, is the relationship still there with the boxes? Is he still signed to them or have you parted ways? Oh, we're, we're, still, we're still signed just now with him, I. What are you expecting from Carlos Takam? Obviously, he's a guy that's given everyone a hard fight. Um, some people are questioning whether he's, he's got it left in the tank, but every time they rule him out, he always comes and springs a surprise. As long as he doesn't swing a surprise on Saturday night. Yeah. And, uh, but he's going to think he's the one that's going to be surprised by the, the skill and uh, ability that Martin McCauley has. And talking of like Martin's recent performances, obviously he, he looked great boxing wise. He, he got a stoppage win, but a lot of people were making uh, a big fuss about his weight and his size. Is that something you're bothered about? Is it something you looked at, or is that just him as a fighter? It's just him as a fighter. As, as, as somebody that I respect in boxing says to me, says, if, if Martin McCauley is sitting 90, uh, sorry, 20 stone, as long as he's fit, which I know he's, all my fighters are fit, as long, if he's sitting at 20 stone, he's going to be a handful for anybody. Oh, what's the realistic route for Martin? Because um, the heavyweight division seems like everything's tied up now. So you beat, Carl, I, don't, I don't look too past Carlos Stackham, but if you beat Carlos Stackham, because you've said already, boxer, you know, you're know, struggling to get a date. So what, what is next? Uh, there is something else in the pipeline, but we'll, we, 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 what, I'm very much a, a one fight at a time guy. Uh, take care of Stackham, take care of business on Saturday night, and then we'll move on to Hopefully that's something else. I know you mentioned uh, Spencer Brown earlier, who, who's you know been a, a bit of a key figure in putting this event together. Um, what do you make of him, you know, putting together Fury Usyk and obviously the Ngannou fight as well? You know, playing his role in in the whole event. Um, a lot of people are suggesting Tyson was going to avoid Usyk and he was just going to cash out. That's what people are saying, but obviously that doesn't appear to be the case. No, there's no way Tyson would cash out or, or avoid any man. You know, he's, he is just now the number one heavyweight in the world. Uh, with regards to Spencer, I've known Spencer for many, many years and he's been a, a very good friend of mine. I've, somebody I've, I've actually phoned up and asked for advice of and I phoned very few people up within the boxing fraternity and asked him for advice. But he's somebody who, who, who are, whose uh, knowledge I respect. What he's done to get this fight and uh, the Usyk fight over line is fantastic. And, uh, you know, just like our boxing and the, bo the sport of boxing is full of jealous, jealous people. So no doubt there'll be snippets aimed towards Spencer now. But that's just the nature of the beast. But he can be very proud of himself because he's done a fantastic job f for uh, boxing and primarily the boxer that he represents, Tyson Fury. Uh, definitely so. And with regards to, uh, you know, 
opinions and talks. I know you're quite strong and you don't really care what you say because, you know, stuff you come out with on Twitter, you just say what you think. Um, obviously, we've had a scenario, if you saw the other day, um, apparently it's been mentioned that TalkSport are banned from this event because of the views and opinions that we shared about Tyson Fury, you know, ducking the fight and the fact that he should be ashamed of uh, the fact that he wasn't fighting Usyk at the time when the negotiations fell through. Uh, what do you make of all that? Do you think, like, is that a, if you was in Tyson's position or the, the Team Fury position, would you take that approach as well? As somebody was uh, said some extremely detrimental words, my boxer, why would you uh, hand them out a, a pass to come t come to the, the show that for somebody that they've they've not? Mm -hmm. I, I would I would agree with Tyson Fury to be, to be honest. People should be no no so much uh, non judgmental. Uh, and with regards to the show itself, any of the other heavyweights here you're excited to watch? You know, there's a, there's a guy from uh, Canada, Arslanbek Makhmadov. I think the idea of him and Bukoli would be a good fight, actually, thinking about it. I'd have that fight next. We'd have that fight, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Watched him last night against Akam. 12 rounds. Uh, 12, 12 rounds? I think he dropped him a few times in the first time. He got put in a couple of times. Uh, one was a wee bit contentious because he turned him in the ropes and his head was over the ropes and it hit the top of the head. Uh, but the second one was a legit shot, but he got hit a few times himself. And if it was Mark McCauley hitting him continually, not only not only with the right hands at Takam hitting him, but Martin would be throwing that jab in his face all night. But he'd never been in with somebody to throw as many jabs as him. You know, his he's, he's, he's work rate is extremely high, Martin's. You know, I, I would have the Mag Magnaval fight, no problem. It'd be a good fight. Um... I think uh, the, the last thing I want to ask you, uh, Billy, is uh, with regards to uh, the event as a whole. Um, you excited about the whole Fury and Garnu fight? You know, as people have been knocking it, but you know we've seen. I think Eddie Hearn did an interview the other day, and he said he was shocked that the British Boxing Board have licensed this fight and not licensed, and they were not willing to license Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. That's that's a comparison that he made. Well, there's issues. There's issues there, but the the, the Ben the Ben thing. The, the board are still appealing against the decision. Uh, I mean, I find that. Quite, I'm, I'm I'm actually quite surprised. Eddie's shocked. Well, I was shocked. Eddie was a Eddie was a man that, as I said on Twitter, Eddie was a man that tried to ask a boxer to come down to a weight that he hadn't fought it for many many years, and also wanted to implement a rehydration clause. So, you know, you should maybe look at closer at yourself before you knock others. And um, the last question I've got for you. You know, you said earlier in the interview that you know you wasn't getting any opportunities from boxers, so. Uh, if this did opportunity didn't come about, what 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 was the plan? Were you just going to sit out and wait for something to come along? Aye, until Spencer came out, came and offered us the fight against Takam, because there's, there's nothing else well than I, which is disgraceful, shocking. It's a difficult game, this boxing game, isn't it? Especially when you're a heavyweight. Um, Especially with somebody that's number two in the world, mm. uh, number seven in the WBC, willing to fight anybody, mm. and we were we were willing to fight anybody. Is it, is it a case of people refusing to fight him or is it the case of the amount of money it would require to put an event on involving Martin? Well, what I'm told, well, Martin, aye, there's a, a, there's a, although Martin, Martin does earn a lot of money, but they signed the contract, the, the, they offered, that was a contract we, we, we were offered, so they have to, you know, they have to adhere to that contract. But in fairness to boxers, a lot of people have not bought a fight, so I'm told, you know, m multiple people. Good stuff. Uh, Billy, anything else you want to add before I let you go? No, I just, uh, again, like to thank Spencer uh, for the opportunity that we've got out here. Uh, thoroughly looking forward to it. It's a brand new stadium, 26, I think it's 26, 28,000 people. And I, ho I hope it's a, a fantastic spectacle for the the, the public and the, and the people of Saudi Arabia who have looked after us fantastically well since we've been here. Definitely, so I advise you to check out Riyadh season and the things that are on offer over the next six months. There's loads to do and see if you get a chance. Uh, well, uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to see some before I, I go back home as well. Billy Nelson, thank you very much.